Proclaim the salvation of God day by day. Tell among the nations his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith <clears throat> by which the blessed apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that through the help of his prayers, your church may become for all the nations the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel spoke to me, saying, Come here. I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Let's <clears throat> make known, O Lord the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom, 
Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Make known, O Lord, the blandest word of your kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Son of God, you are the King of Israel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law, and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. In the apostle Saint Bartholomew, who is also equated with Saint Nathaniel in the gospel today, we hear our Lord say that he is a true Israelite, a man without duplicity, or sometimes translated as without guile, in the sense that Saint Bartholomew was a man where you saw his true intentions. He was not someone that would try to hide behind a facade or some type of exterior covering, but was rather very straightforward and truthful. We know that Saint Bartholomew, after Pentecost, went to different parts of the earth to preach the gospel. He went to India, and we know that he also went to Armenia. And when he was in Armenia, tradition says that he it was there that he suffered, uh, he suffered martyrdom, that he died for his faith. And he had a very unusual martyrdom, and this is most vividly depicted in the Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. Because in the Sistine Chapel, and the the beautiful, famous depiction of the Last Judgment, we have many martyrs. And one of those martyrs is Saint Bartholomew. And Saint Bartholomew, he was murdered. He was, you might say, he was flayed or he was skinned to death that he, in the depiction of him in the Last Judgment, he is there, he has 
a knife in one hand, you might say that what he was flayed with, what he was skinned with, and then in the other hand, he is holding his own skin. And many spiritual writers have seen this as appropriate in a sense because what was said today about him in the gospel, that he was a man without, of no duplicity, without guile, that he was, there was no exterior, he was in, even in his martyrdom when he was, you might say, our skin covers our soul or our body, that he was laid completely before God as he was, without duplicity, without guile, without trying to hide anything, being purified of all sin and all attachments to this life. He gave his life for God and went to heaven. And we see in the writings of many of the saints that in a certain sense, we won't be, hopefully, we won't have to be flayed or skinned, but we all have to go through a certain purification, that our intentions will have to become pure, that we'll have to go through and make, do things, you might say, for the love of God and His will alone, and that our whole life is a kind of a purification of that, where we're stripped of all exterior things until we're laid, you might say, naked before God. We see this described in many of the, the saints' writings in the spiritual life, St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Avila, in this certain purification that takes place before we can be completely united with God. One example you might say of this is that recently, Father Claude, our beloved uh, confrere and priest that is the pastor now of Saints Peter and Paul, he has been recently assigned to become our rector in Rome to take over the uh, generalate house where our seminarians and many priests of our order still live and where they work in the seminarian study in Rome. Now, when Father Claude had a different job before he was pastor, I heard him say many times that he would love to be sent to Rome to work in the generalate house. That was like his dream. But then he was made pastor of Saints Peter and Paul, and he has kind of fallen in love with that position. And so it's been very hard now that he's, he got his wish, you might say, but now he's crying and it's a very difficult assignment to take for him, even though it was his dream before, but now he has something, he has a position that he really loves. So it's a hard for him to give up being pastor of Saints Peter and Paul. But through the encouragement of our superiors, Father Claude is, of course, resigned to the will of God, that he's been purified, that he's becoming more and more a man without duplicity, a man without guile, to accept God's will with great resignment, even though in being purified, you might say, in his intentions, in his desire to serve God above all things. And so let us pray for the intercession of St. Bartholomew, that we too that we might accept God's will, that we might become men and women of without duplicity, without guile, wanting to serve God and love God above all things. Saint Bartholomew, pray for us. Please stand. Trusting that God sees in us in our joy and in our need, let us bring our prayers before him with confidence. For the church, may the Spirit conform us evermore fully in accord with our heavenly call. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may Christ who sees all things help them to see the needs of those who are most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who feel overlooked or unseen, may they know the loving gaze of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For 
our community and especially for Carmencita Protasio Calloway for whom this Mass is being offered. May the Lord help us see one another and all creation, all of creation with the eyes of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all who have died in the light of Christ, may they rejoice in the glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray especially for David and Amy Zach who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy and love, look favorably on the prayers of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle, in whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Zana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> Not worthy that you should enter under my roof. May the word and my soul shall be. I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, says the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed Apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and for the life to come, through Christ our Lord. If now I could please ask David and Amy Zach to come forward. They're celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, and so we have a special blessing for them. O oh God, Almighty Father, for the sake of the good works they have done through their life, long life together, look kindly on this husband and wife, David and Amy. And as you sealed the beginnings of their love by a wonderful sacrament, so bless their fruit of their life together. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have a little holy water. Congratulations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. 